Good morning, Cross Timbers. Today is Friday, October 19th, 2012. This is Texan TV News from the Tarleton State University campus in Stephenville, Texas, and I'm Monet Gerald. For today's headlines, Houston Hall shot footage of the Plowboy recruits preparing the bonfire. A judge stops Los Angeles police from getting tapes about murders. Virgin files foreshadow Boy Scout sexual predators. Iraq presses the U.S. for faster weapon deliveries. NBC to cancel a short-lived sitcom. A recap of the Seattle-San Francisco game. A preview of the Tarleton homecoming game against Texas A&M Kingsville. And the weekend weather report. Now today's top story. In campus news, tonight the Plowboys and their recruits will help us celebrate the bonfire tradition at City Park. Since 1983, the Plowboys have been in charge of building the man-made phenomenon. The bonfire is constructed of 15,000 to 2,000 pallets this, this year. In years past, when the fire was much larger, the number of pallets would range from 14,000 to sometimes 18,000. They find the pallets they use in places like Brownwood, Dublin, Heiko, Tolar, and other towns surrounding the area. This year, they even drove as far as Denton County to look for some good pallets. The fire itself, when it's completed, is decorated with the Plowboy family signs and even some artistic pieces of construction that come in the form of an outhouse at the top. And of course, the iconic Plowboy skull. There are 20 recruits this year building the fire. The men directing them are active members, Harry Taylor, the fire foreman, and Wes Lee Favors, the president of the organization. Come out and enjoy the festivities this year at City Park from 7 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Here's a clip from yesterday shot by Houston Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, these are some of the recruits that are building the fire. A 2012 homecoming bonfire, which is brought to you, of course, by the Plowboys. As you can see, Harry Taylor, the foreman of the fire, is directing the recruits to build the structure correctly and most importantly with stability. Also in campus news, Freedom of Speech Week begins Monday, October 23rd. According to the Tarleton State University website, the sponsors of this week are the Society of Professional Journalists chapter and the Department of Communication Studies will commemorate the week addressing free speech issues. A variety of guest speakers will be on campus, including Communications Department professor and award-winning journalist Dr. Katherine Jones will be presenting don't Shoot the Messenger, Free Speech and Bad News, Wednesday from 12 from 1210 to 1250 p.m. in the OA Grant Building, Room 116. All presentations are free and open to the public. For more information, please refer to the Tarleton State University website. And now, in state news, according to the Texas A&M Twitter account, a code maroon was issued this morning at 1140 by administration of Texas A&M in College Station. A bomb threat was received on campus. 
Classes were canceled and students and staff were asked to evacuate towards the north and south areas of campus. They were also requested not to drive their cars. No other information is available at this time. Also in state news, Big Tex, the iconic statue that sits in front of the state fair grounds in Dallas, Texas, has been destroyed by fire this morning. Media relations for the Dallas Fire and Rescue were contacted in an attempt to get more information, but were unable to comment. According to KWTX of Waco, the fair's vice president of marketing said the fire was caused by an electrical short. The grounds fairs are still open in spite of the fire. Also in state news, according to the Associated Press, U.S. District Judge Richard A. Shells has stopped the Los Angeles Police Department from gaining access to eight cassette tapes that contain conversation with Charles Manson disciple Charles Tex Watson and attorney Bill Boyd. Manson is famous for orchestrating the Sharon Tate, Leo, and Rosemary LaBianca murders of 1969. Watson is a native of Copeville, Texas, and is currently serving a life sentence in California for his role in what is considered one of the most notorious crimes of the 20th century. Watson and four others were sentenced to death in 1971, but due to a law change in 1972, the death penalty no longer exists in California. They were given life sentences instead. The LAPD is interested in the tapes because they believe Watson and Boyd may have discussed other unsolved murders. Watson is appealing the decision that keeps LAPD from, re from reviewing the tapes and is willing to let the police listen to the tapes. Boyd died in 2009, and the tapes are now in the possession of Linda Payne, a co-worker of Boyd's firm. And now today's national and international news from the Associated Press. In national news, according to the Associated Press, newly opened files show that police chiefs, prosecutors, pastors, and local Boy Scout leaders defended scoutmasters and others accused of molesting children from 1959 until 1985. What officials are calling the perversion files were released Thursday by order of the Oregon Supreme Court. Attorney Kelly Clark scolded the Boy Scouts of America for attempting to keep the files hidden from the public. You don't keep secrets hidden about dangers to children, Clark said. There were over 14,000 pages in the files that were hidden, a maneuver that allowed sexual predators to go free while their victims suffered in silence. The Boy Scouts wanted to preserve the good name and good works of scouting, a pillar of 20th century America. In 2010, the files were shown before a jury in an Oregon civil suit. There is little mention of the welfare of the Scouts in the files. In international news, the AP is reporting Iraq's Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki made a request for faster deliveries of weapons to help arm the country's military. Al-Maliki made the request to U.S. Deputy Defense Secretary Ashton Carter in Baghdad on Thursday. Al-Maliki said Iraq needs to strengthen its defenses to protect the country's security and national sovereignty, as well as tackle terrorist groups that continue to threaten Iraq's stability. Iraq has agreed to buy a range of American-made weapons, including, fighter ta including tanks and F-16 fighter jets, as it works to rebuild and modernize its military. Pentagon spokesman George Little said that Carter used his trip to Iraq to emphasize Iraq's role in ensuring regional stability and said the country's cooperation on matters of mutual and strategic interest continue to be more vital than ever. The last American troops left Iraq on December 18, 2011, and sticking to a year-end withdrawal deadline outlined in 2008 security agreement. The U.S. had hoped to maintain a military presence in Iraq beyond that deadline, but Washington was unable to reach a deal with the Iraqis on legal issues and immunity for the troops. A smaller number of U.S. military personnel remain in Iraq as an extension of the American embassy and are responsible for assisting Iraqi arms purchases and training the Iraqis in how to use and maintain the weapons. In entertainment news, the AP is reporting that NBC's new show Animal Practice is to be canceled due to low ratings. After only five episodes, the veterinarian-based show at an animal hospital in New York will air its last episode November 7th. Just this week, there were less than 4 million viewers, compared to the 14 million average viewers that watched the popular sitcom The Big Bang Theory on CBS. Stars of the series include Justin Kirk from Weeds and Crystal the Capuchin Monkey from The Hangover series. 
Taking its place will be season two of Whitney, starring Whitney Cummings, airing November 17th. And now for sports. The AP reports the San Francisco 49ers beat the Seattle Seahawks 13-6 last night. The 49ers had the lead at halftime 6-3, but did not score after the half. Their final drive combined for only 37 yards, and Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson had only three completions for 19 yards after the half. The 3-3 Tarleton Texans will host the 3-4 Texas A&M Kingsville Javelinas tomorrow in Tarleton's 52nd annual homecoming contest. Kickoff is scheduled to start at 6 p.m. at Tarleton Memorial Stadium. According to the Weather Channel, this weekend expect today a high of 80 and a low of 54. On Saturday, expect a high of 85 and a low of 66. And on Sunday, you can expect a high of 86 and a low of 66. Today's broadcast was produced by Travis Allison, Chelsea Sapolio, Alyssa Wynn, and Houston Hall. You can follow us on Ustream.tv slash user slash Texan News Service. Don't forget to tell your friends about us and become a fan of Texan TV News on Facebook. I'm Monet Gerald. Tune in Monday for the latest news from the Tarleton State University campus in Stephenville, Texas. Have a great weekend.